Hello, we're continuing to look at things you can do in your garden in June and this is one of the times for earthing up potatoes. I've got some potatoes here in this area where I'm growing them in containers because I don't have a lot of room in the vegetable plot and potatoes are an ideal crop for growing in um, containers. The idea of earthing them up is, you, is to fill up the tub with some more compost, to raise the compost level or the soil level. The advantage of earthing up potatoes and raising the soil level is it helps protect the tubers below because it's very important that they don't go green as as you know green potatoes can cause a lot of stomach upset so adding compost helps to keep them dark. It also gives some protection to those tubers also in the event of blight. But earthing them up is simply using soil compost, spent compost. Now I've got a mixture of spent and new compost here. It uh, needs quite a lot to earth up all the potatoes so it can be expensive if you use all compost and sometimes this year in particular it's quite hard to get hold of compost. So I've kept some spent compost and I'm going to use that for earthing up. And all you do, and you need to be really gentle doing this, is that you fill the pot with some more compost. and then just pat it down very gently. You want to be careful because what you don't want to do is damage the top growth because obviously that will cause problems for the potatoes. Just top up the level of compost. So that it's part, so effectively you're adding extra depth and that extra depth will give more room for tubers to form and it will also help to protect the tubers that are in there. And you need to go around the whole of the container, earthing up, adding more soil and compost. And you can do that once or twice during the growing season. Good opportunity to uh, look at blight, which can be a real problem with potatoes. Late blight affects potatoes and tomatoes, and it commonly starts around mid to late June. And the trigger for blight is warm, humid air. Blight travels on the wind, in the air and it will attack potatoes and tomatoes and what it does is it turns the foliage brown and the whole top of the plant or the tomato plant starts to collapse. There's no cure for blight unfortunately so you can join a website like Blight Watch and you can get an alert for your postcode telling you when there's blight in the area uh, like this weekend it's talking about temperatures about 20 degrees and rain and that's classic blight conditions but even if you know that blight's around there's nothing you can do about it there isn't anything you can spray your potatoes these are early potatoes and we've had a really good long dry spell so as you can see they're a good height and that will not long before they'll start flowering and be ready for harvest so one of the things you can do if you have an area where you're prone to blight is to grow early potatoes to try and get your crop harvested before the blight takes effect. You can also grow types of potatoes which are said to be blight resistant. This area is quite prone to blight because we get quite a lot of wet weather. So I always grow tomatoes in a greenhouse and if you grow tomatoes in a greenhouse you will be blight free in respect of tomatoes. Potatoes as an outside crop is more of a risk. So if blight does strike, you will have to remove the leaves that are affected and eventually you'll have to remove all the leaves from the plant. Now, it does mean at that stage the potatoes will stop growing, but they'll be okay. Um, they'll have formed and what you can do is leave them in the soil for about two weeks so the skins harden and then you can harvest them. And you'll still get a good crop providing the blight doesn't strike too early. And if you've got potatoes that are looking like this, which is quite a lot of top growth, then you should be fine even if you have to remove all of the foliage at a later stage.